Hey guys, welcome back to DF Outdoors. I made a lot of vehicle related content lately, but hunting season is right around the corner from us here in South Carolina where I live. Just over a month away is when our archery season starts. So today I'm gonna be focusing a little bit on archery. I'm gonna go through a little bit of my setup and how I practice here in my backyard. And we'll talk about a few other things as well. So one of the first things I wanted to talk about is my backstop here. Built it about two years ago and it has served really well. Um, I live in a suburban kind of environment and there's a lot of houses around and shooting my bow responsibly has always been a little bit of a chore. You wanna make sure you're not sending arrows into people's backyards or something like that. And I think I saw some kind of iteration of this on YouTube that kind of inspired this backstop and it does a great job of stopping arrows. I'll take a shot at it here in a minute just to show you how well it stops arrows. But basically what it is, is a treated two by four frame made out of treated lumber. It's pretty simple. It's got some little legs on it here, a little bit of cross brace, that kind of thing. And then the main part of it is this three quarter inch horse mat. Basically what it is, I got from Tractor Supply and it's four foot by six foot. Can't remember exactly how much it costs. I can look it up and put it in the description. Um, then I just kind of screwed it onto the frame with like some deck screws and some fender washers just to hold it on there. And it does a great job of stopping arrows. Like I said, um, I've never actually shot a broadhead at it, so I can't say how it does with that, but it stops arrows with a field point just fine and doesn't damage the arrow. I've actually only ever actually hit it once, I think. I was out here practicing with my bow and I had a fletching fly off when I shot and it sent the arrow way off course. And I hit the, the backstop and it did exactly what it's supposed to. Um, it stopped the arrow really, really nicely. And one thing nice about this is if you're setting up a new site or something like that, it is, it's really good to have some, a big backstop like this. So in case you completely miss your target, you're not gonna have to worry about being way off. I mean, this backstop is, I believe, four foot by six foot. Um, it's, a, it's a good size. So the chances of you missing a four foot by six foot backstop at 20 yards or so, 10, 15, 20 yards when you're setting up a site is slim to none. I mean, you're not gonna be off that much. So it's really good with that. You know, it's good at catching those stray arrows should you have one of those get away from you. So I'm gonna step back and take a shot directly at the backstop and I'll show you how well it stops. All right, so there you can see I sent one right over his back. Completely missed my 3D target and I'll show you the backside here. Got maybe nine inches of penetration, 10 inches, something like that. At least kind of like a rubbery residue on here. It's kind of like tire material, but that cleans off pretty easily. Um, it stops the arrow great. You don't have to worry about it going all the way through and ripping off fletchings and hitting whatever is in the background. So it is a great backstop. Um, you can build one for pretty cheap. Um, lumber prices are kind of high right now, so probably can't do it as cheaply as I did a couple years ago, but even then it's not too bad. And with using treated material, it'll last a long time out here. The other thing I want to talk about is my new 3D target that I have here. Um, I had one of those Glendell 3D targets for a number of years, probably seven or eight years, and it lasted a long time. I replaced the insert in it a few times, and it was a good target, but it just wore out. I shot it too many times, hit the body of it too many times, it just started falling apart. So I got this from from Cabela's yesterday. It's a little bit smaller than my old target, but it seems to be made in a really similar fashion. It seems like the same kind of 
foam insert that was in the last one. It seems like it's made well. So hopefully it'll last a good long time. I can get a lot of years out of it. And this will be my target for a while now. So the last part of this video, I'm gonna talk about my bow and my arrow set up a little bit, as well as my new release I got for this year. Um, my bow I got when I graduated high school, which is like 14 years ago. <laughs> so I've had it for quite a while. I've had it restrung once. It is a diamond. I can't remember which exact model it is, but diamond is made by Bowtech. So it's an older Bowtech model bow. And like I said, I've had it restrung once by a good friend of mine who is an archery guru. And so it's held up really well. It's been a good bow. Um, shot a few deer with it. I don't do a ton of bow hunting, but I have taken a few deer with it. Um, missed a few too, but operator error. Uh, my arrows, this is my, really my second big batch of arrows that I've done. I'm shooting Carbon Express Maxima Reds. And I believe they are, a, I believe a 250 spine. If I can find it on here. Well, I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Um, they've been good arrows. I like them. Carbon Express is known for quality arrows. Uh, I shoot Carbon Express Torrid SS broadheads, I believe. I think that's what they are. Uh, they're a good broadhead. They leave a pretty good blood trail. I'm thinking of switching to uh, some NAPs or something like that. Um, if you have any suggestions on broadheads, let me know. I know broadheads are a touchy subject with a lot of people. People talking about fixed blade versus mechanical and guys get really particular about that but just let me know what you what you like to use and maybe I'll consider switching to that this year um, the next thing is my my new release here if I can get the focus this is the little goose by Scott archery I got this at the rec recommendation of the same guy that restrung my bow for me he said it's a really good release my old one was just all worn out and the velcro was shot on the wrist strap and it was hard hardly stay on and it was just time for something new. And I really like this one so far. I think I am going to lengthen it a little bit. It's very adjustable. You can even adjust the trigger sensitivity. So I'm still getting used to that. So hopefully it'll be a good release for me. Uh, let me know what you shoot. I know a lot of guys like the thumb release or, you know, all the different variations of release. So this is what kind of what I'm used to. My re last release was similar to this, just not quite as nice. So I'm hoping it does does well for me hopefully early bow season I can take take a deer that would be great I'm gonna be trying to, be, to film some of my hunts this year I gotta figure out how I want to set up I don't have a fancy camera or anything like that I just film everything off of my iPhone so I'll try to get some content about that so keep your eyes peeled for that and I appreciate you watching if you have any questions about my backdrop setup or my bow or my arrows or whatever or hunting things in general just put a comment down there let me know if you like this comment uh this content <laughs> and uh i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching Well, this is a pretty good group. I'm happy with that. Very much off the mark, but I think that's just a matter of adjusting my sights. Shooting, shooting a good group is more than half the battle, I think. So just gotta get those sights dialed in, keep practicing, and get ready for the season.